I heard her name when I was in Indian Mission School, and I heard the name then, and I've heard it all my life since, so that's 80-some years ago. St. Cattery was born in 1656 in what we know today as New York. And when she was about four years old, a smallpox epidemic struck the village, killing both her parents and her little brother. So the laity, as well as the clergy, had a big role in both uh, evangelizing, but also helping her to stay strong in the, in the time after her conversion. And she had these pock marks on her face. And as soon as she died, her face became perfectly clear. One of the Jesuits says, beautiful, her face. After Cattery became venerable, many people began to pray earnestly for her beatification. The Cattery circles, they have just grown all the time. After her beatification, uh, people thought the canonization would take place quite quickly. And I kept telling the people, it's up to her. She's got to work a miracle. Jacob had been in a basketball game and had uh, received a facial injury, a wound, that had gotten infected. However, the infection was with um, what the secular world knows as a flesh-eating bacteria. At the time of Jake's accident, uh, Father Tim Sauer, he was our pastor, and he's the one that sat down and said, okay, you need to pray for Blessed Kateri's intercession, and he told us why. And his reasoning being that she also was young, she was infected with smallpox that scarred her face, and that she too was Native American. I've heard of many people who were brought back to the church because of my story, and so I certainly feel like that was one of the purposes. St. Kateri welcomes us to Rome through her heart and the heart of the church. Good evening. Pilgrims from the United States of America. It was a big blessing to be there in person, to see it all and see the multitude of people and the excitement. Katarina Tecaquita. Seeing the Pope at the canonization and being 20 feet probably away from him was a great thing for me. I feel really proud that she's being seen right now because she's a native and she's just like us and like me. She was native and she stayed true to her native tradition, but also lived that in her Catholic life. For 330 some years we waited. Well, through the Kateri Circles and the Tekwitha Conference, we've all been uniting. You see every nation here. And I think that we're even going to get closer because of her. And everybody is so happy. Yeah, I'm going to cry again. <laughs> And we call her beautiful, high up woman. And now she is high up. Today, the Lord has given us an extraordinary new companion for this pilgrimage of our hearts. <laughs>